Get ready, get set for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe. It's the Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Welcome back to another episode of The Good Brothers. I'm Alex, that's Mike. We are The Good Brothers, the best brothers. Maybe not the greatest brothers, but definitely The Good Brothers. The best podcast in the Midwest, in the multiverse, in the symbiote-verse, possibly. Oh, wow. Mike, how are you? I'm doing very well, and I've decided that we are the podcast universe, Road Warriors, Legion of Doom. We have taken the moniker of Hawk and Animal because, you know, Chicago badass brothers. I think we deserve it. I want shoulder pads. Yeah, they were they were shoot they weren't shoot brothers, but we'll we'll say that they were shoot brothers. They were brothers. Like Good brother. Welcome back to the show. I was uh, manning down the Millennium Falcon by myself last week. Uh, Terrible Oscar. job. Uh, we, we saw what happened. We did the that. Kessel run without you, Chewbacca Good Brother. Chewbacca should not so you know. fly alone. So how is competition season going? It's good. We're in the yeah. midst of it still. We still have two more big ones. We're about midway through, probably third nice. quarter through. I'll be in Dallas coming up, and then we have one more local in Schaumburg, and then we're kind of on a – we go on a little quiet before the big nationals. All right, hopefully the kids have a good time, and hopefully they get some W's. Fun, yeah. yeah, but good, brother. We have a lot of stuff to get into. Disney dominating the news the last 24 hours yes. with some big, big stuff from the top. I mean, double now. On. We, we so just got breaking news that we'll, we'll talk about. We'll get into that in just a little bit. We also got to get into what I thought was going to be the lead of the show, but ends up just getting, getting pushed down, and that's what happens when it's a weekly show. We got our first look at the Batman – Stuntman costume, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Friends, and of course, AEW and WWE having some main shows. One on a Saturday, one on a Thursday. Pretty interesting when we're used to Sunday. All that and so much more on the greatest podcast in the multiverse, the symbioteverse. Mostly the Midwest. Mostly the Midwest, Chicago, and I'll even say the Speed Force, the Good Brothers. But before we get all to that, let's all go to the movies. And we got to go fast, good brother, because Sonic the Hedgehog beat out a CGI dog and Han Solo himself as Sonic the Hedgehog was the number one movie. Have you, have you seen it yet? I have not seen it yet. Nicole I, really wants to see I it. I have. How is it? It's a kid's movie. Do you it, want it's it? fun. It's very good. I liked it. But you have to go in and knowing. I went in knowing it is a kid's movie. Mm. It's not one of those movies was where. Was it like Hop, like I said? Yeah. It's okay. exactly like Hop, where you're yeah. like, which I, again, I saw that one in theaters yeah. when it came out. And you're like, oh, this is fun. Like, I get it, but this is a kid's movie. So I And they were smart for doing that because that's where the money is. Absolutely. So I'm going to go check Jim it out, Carrey though. is a tre- best. A treasure. Steals yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's a national Welcome treasure. Welcome back. Welcome back. I, I think we're about to see in the next three years the Renaissance. him doing some Academy Award winning stuff. I would be all here for it. I was watching some of his uh, In Living Color stuff that's been going online again. He had just, he what, just he, did that the vanilla uh, he, ice on, on his show. Yeah. I mean, I know you're not big into, like, the kids, but when he just on his show, he had Ariana Grande. I'll go for and him. They, and they sang like it's supposed to be a kid's show. Yeah. And they sang a song, and like you forget, he's so talented. Oh, he's the man. No, Jim Carrey like, is the man. But, good brother, what do you think about the fact that Han Solo still makes a lot of money off of, I'm going to call it, cover your I'm earmuffs, did, a mad. bullshit movie, a CGI dog to call it the it wild. It wasn't even two. a dog. It was it a was person playing a, a dog. A person playing it's a dog. weird. Uh, makes $24 million. I, I, you know what? For the longest time with the advertising, I thought it was going to be a Disney Plus movie. Yeah, so did I. And I got confused. I was like, oh, my God, they're releasing it. In its defense, it, it did make decent money. $24 million. It, it's not bad. It was right up there with Sonic, obviously. Sonic I, makes 26 Depends on how much like this movie probably cost a little bit to make. Dropped so half, know. though. Because of President's Day weekend last week, and obviously kids being yeah. back in school, Sonic did drop almost more than half. At from this point, Sonic. Sonic's done yeah. so well that we're... Uh, yeah. We're going to see a sequel. Oh, for sure. And this might start a surge of maybe these video game movies, we need to direct them toward kids more and stop trying to be so serious. Or at the very least, treat them like important well, IP. We're in a good spot right now because this one did good. So we're like, okay, the kitty characters, we know how to play with a little bit. We can do better, but we can play with it. And then hopefully more to combat coming on next year can show us, okay, the adult stuff, if done right, okay, video game movies are a thing. Now, I suggest everybody go check out Fandom. They are friends of the show, and they put out a cool little graphic that showed all the upcoming mm-hmm. video game movies what are going to be CGI. The Witcher is great be on, Netflix. on Netflix. So, like, at action. this point, we are seeing the rise of the video game. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Anime. Like, we're at the we're, we're about to get into like not, we're not even close to the peak, but we're on the rise. Like, this I is definitely so. the rise yeah. of the video game properties, and that's super cool. And like, people are getting cast left and right. Mm-hmm. And you know, we got the Mortal Kombat anime coming out this year before the live action next year. And I'm really excited to see where this goes because I feel like now we're in the right space, and it's been done wrong so many times. 
that we know where to go about. I think the best way to approach it is kind of like a superhero movie. Mm. It doesn't all have to be the same. No, yeah, we can yeah, yeah. genre like this could be for kids. This could be extra violent. This could be more interesting. This is our mini series. Like this it, is it's a lot. Yeah, series. exactly. This belongs here. If you can do The Witcher, you can do The Legend of Zelda. And I, I talked a lot of it last week, good brother. What I want is The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, yep, Mario. Let's see, like, and they're all different. And guess what? You can do a Metroid movie. Yes. You can, or even a miniseries. That's the only one. Uh, She's Mario, Ripley. Mario, I want to see you do Illumination. I want to see me, Wreck-It give Ralph. Give me a fun, exactly. Just give me a fun animated movie where I don't have to question anything. It's just the Mushroom Kingdom. And then Legend of Zelda. I want The Witcher. Yeah. Give me that exact same thing with The Legend of Zelda. And we could get into it. I think maybe this, that's a great conversation for a... When we get more info coming in. And up. an end game type of thing when we bring in the future Super Mercado Bros show into here after E3. Maybe would we want to see Link in a live action movie when he's never talked before, even in one of the greatest games that is Breath of the Wild. But that is what's awesome about Sonic the Hedgehog. Not only making money, but being good. Yeah. And knowing what it I is. Mean, a Quiet Place did a whole movie without talking. Oh, I can't wait for a Quiet Place, yeah. too. Let's go down this list and finish this off, though, good brother. At number three, Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. It's still like that on Rotten Tomatoes. What the hell is the title of this film? Doesn't matter. At number four, Bad Boys for Life. At five, opening up this weekend, was Bram's The Boy 2. The Boy 1 sucked. I don't know. It's a, it's a terrible movie. Yeah. But they're cheap to make. Sure. Number six, Fantasy Island at number seven, 1917 at number eight, I feel Parasite. Like, man, no, that's one genre that just those old school remakes of the 80s shows, like the Baywatch and oh, the yeah. Chips. Now, can you name, like, not one has been good except for 21 Jump Street. And Starsky and Hutch back in that little weird but, like, era it's of Ben like, Stiller. It's been miss after miss after miss. Like, there was no advertising. They buried this movie. And it was a horror movie. It's just, Ish, a, 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 but it, it was an expensive horror movie. Not that expensive, but yeah. compared to, look at The Invisible Man. They spent eight million dollars on that movie. Which that movie we'll get is getting the ravest reviews. And we'll get into Andrew Solo in a second. We talked about it. Seven and eight was nineteen seventeen and Parasite. The Oscar up continues yeah. at nine. Jumanji Parasite next level. Be on Hulu coming up. Can't wait for that. At ten, the photograph. And at eleven, opening up this week, and I wanted to bring it up. Impractical Jokers, the movie, and that's what happens when instead of how much did it make? Two million. I'm sure that movie did not cost a lot to make. Maybe. But here's the thing. I think they were going after like that jackass money. Sure. I I, I think Impractical Jokers missed the missed the timeline a little. This should have been done a few years ago when they were at their peak. They're so oversaturated now. And we have YouTube and Vine, like they're kind of useless. There was a time where they were huge. I'll give them that. Like early two thousand tens, they were it was everywhere. Like right. you couldn't like you had to go find them. I feel like now they've been on for so long and they're syndicated on so many channels and we have so much more to look like they didn't strike when they should have struck because could they, in a certain year back then it would have done what like um, with Jackass, uh, the grandpa one. Yeah, uh, bad grandpa. Where it made money and it was funny and it was entertaining or the Jackass movies in general made a lot of money and were number one. Right. They, they they struck way too late, and I think they knew midway, so they stopped advertising. Yeah. Because you it was a talk last year of like, oh, what's this gonna be? You saw one trailer, and it's like, oh, it's the show. Yeah. That I could see on TBS now at four in the morning. And you know, here's the thing: it's gonna get buried because the movie that's gonna make all the money coming up this weekend is The Invisible Man. And it's gonna make like sick tuplet of what it's costing right now on Rotten Tomatoes after the reviews from the critics and early early buzz. 92%. I heard it's terrifying. It's fantastic. The acting is great. It didn't cost a lot to make. I can't wait. Like, this, these are the movies that make money and are successful. And obviously, it, it, it's done right. You got a great actress. Elizabeth Moss. And then you have Cub Fan. Yep. And then you have a great IP. Thank God it's not Johnny Depp. I love Johnny Depp. Thank God, it's not the Johnny Depp. But it's Invisible Man. Man. You don't need that. No. Like, that, I don't need, because that would distract me more than anything. And, like, I remember the first one that I ever saw was with Kevin Bacon and Josh Brolin. And Brolet. I like that one. I like that one. I really enjoyed that one. So there one. was aspects in it that I like where I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, in a really scary mm-hmm. movie. Is this Blumhouse, by yes, the way? I, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Does this get nominated for an Academy Award, good brother? No. Uh, any type of no. thing? Special effects? No. Elizabeth Moss? No. no. Screenplay? Anything? No. It doesn't need to. This is this is in the spot. Money. This is in the spot of yeah, but those movies had get more. out yeah, but those movies. I hate I to get be, the social commentary. I, I get hate that, to be I'm... that guy, but those movies. I, I call those the modern Oscar grubs, where you're like, 
yeah, like the, the Academy will be like, okay, we'll give it. So like it deserves it. But at the same time, you're like this. No, I don't think right. so. This movie is going to be based off just how scary it is and how much money it's about to make. This is just me saying now. Maybe I'm caught in the moment. You're way caught in the moment. Keep your eye on her, the script, and special effects all later down the year. You are insane. And I'll give you this. You may be good at the picks, but you've never been good at the early prediction. We'll see. Maybe, but we'll see. But we're going to go see this movie, and I can't wait to review it. But that's what you could spend your money on the theater and what's been happening at your local movie complex. Good brother, we continue on with the big news, though, as we come in off the what was a great year of 2019 for Marvel, for Disney, for Star Wars. This comes to us from AP News. As Disney CEO Bob Iger, who steered the company, absorption of Star Wars, Pixar, Marvel, and Fox Entertainment Business, and the launch of its Netflix challenger is stepping down immediately, the company said in a surprise announcement. On Tuesday, the Walt Disney Company named as his replacement Bob Chapik, most recently chairman of Disney's Parks, Experiences, and Products business. He was all over the documentary. He he's great, honestly, and the theme parks are better than ever at this point. Yeah, and they're make, like you know they're better than ever. Yeah, it's interesting. We didn't get much news, which your first mind goes to a cover up of sorts or some scandal. I don't know. We're not going to say that here. Like, that's just. But I think this is par for course for Bob Iger because he's left before and came back. Like, I think yeah. he does that. Like, he gets bored and, and he sometimes you're like, what more can I do? And yeah. you're like, you know, these people, not everyone's Vince McMahon and wants to die at the chair. That's a good like, point. Not at, it, yeah. People do retire. People do want to do other things. And like I said, like so, some people are Jordan. They shoot the shot and they're done. They don't need. They don't need to keep going. Like we always talk about, Jordan could have pl- probably won two more championships into the 2000s. But some people don't want to. Some people are like, I've, I got you Star Wars. I got you Marvel. Like we, we've never been more successful. Profitable. I just got us a, lo- a streaming service. I'm good. I'm, I'm, that, that's how I feel about it. Again, can we find out there's something more to it? Maybe. I mean, but let's get out of – and you could be. But let, let's also talk about – and by the way, this happens at the end of December 31st of 2021. So this is basically taking effect of 2022 unless something crazy happens. It could be a contract thing. It could be like but, we want to go a different direction. But this is two things I want to bring out. One is if it was something scandalous, I don't think he would make it to 2021. No. And also uh, – and very much to all the way to the end could of 2021. He could have his own family issues. Maybe he's got a sick a sick wife, maybe a sick brother. Sick. Like, maybe, maybe he's just like, I'm – Retiring. I'm retiring. Like, it's something that's simple. But here's the other thing I, I, I kind of want to address. Well, it's it's interesting because right now the world is very unstable when it comes to a lot of different financial, business, political, health. You know, we talked about it a few weeks ago. Some movies are being, in, uh, are being put on hold. The Olympics is considering – their alternatives because yep. of this coronavirus. Yep. I wonder if you're Bob Iger, do you sit there and be like, look at political unrest between the United States and China, this health concern, this financial crisis people are talking about. Maybe I jump ship now and I've got into this company to a point where the only thing left in here is to plateau and then to drop again. Yeah, exactly. Like we're, and we've talked about, it. let's look at it as entertainment. We Star Wars is at the point where we're already like enough movies. We never thought we'd get there with Star Wars. Ever. Dis or Marvel, we're more worried of like, can they continue at after that huge series finale? What do you what now? And that's why it's interesting. You're like, I think you're right. Where he's like, there's really not much more we can do. Like we, I launched a service that's competing with Netflix and com- and competing. Like you said, maybe he just was like, I'm done. I don't want to ride the down at this point. Like Kathleen Kennedy's contract's almost up. There's a lot of people I think that are like, okay, it's time for an. I'm not going to ride the slope down. And, and that's, that's someone no. else's job to ride it down to ride it back up. So we'll keep our eyes on this story and see how it all breaks down. Again, we're talking about the guy who is in charge of Kevin Feige, Kathleen yeah. Kennedy. Like, this is the guy who... who For all things we know, he's a he's a great boss. Well, very, very much a great boss, great businessman. Yeah. And that, like, we've only heard great things. About and, and, and we'll say this. He's always lived by that mantra of they protect their brand. And remember, he put out a book recently, so like it does feel more like I just want to be. I'm done. done. I, I'm good. Like I, I've lived my life. So that is some news coming out of Disney corporate. 
Some other news common that goes down is before we started recording, Good Brother, what did you see come down the pipeline? Steven Spielberg is off the Indiana Jones franchise. Uh, David um, Mangold. James Mangold. James Mangold. From be, Logan and Ford yeah, Ferrari. Yeah, he will be taking over, which is great. I think this was a company move to say, okay, whatever he had in mind, we can't pull off anymore. And who better to get an Indiana Jones 5 than the guy that did the sending off of Wolverine? Right. So now I'm excited of like, oh, are we going to get some like gritty, like, I'm too old for this. I'm like, too old here, for like this there's no one better for it. It is upsetting because Steven Spielberg is Steven Spielberg. And this is his baby. At the same time, I didn't, you know, Crystal Skull is what it is. Yeah. I personally think it's fine. I don't hate Crystal Skull. I think it's, uh, it's definitely the worst of all of them, but I still think it's a very enjoyable movie. But I'm going to apologize. It's like Star Wars. Or like Even the worst Star Wars movie is still a Star Wars movie. Like Clone Wars sucks, but like I'm entertained by it. That's how I kind of see Crystal Skull. Yeah, where Crystal I was like, sucks, yeah. it's fine. It's a fun action it's like, adventure. It's, it's really not. not Jones, yeah, but. like it's it's. I don't hate it. No, I don't hate it. I don't it's think it destroyed movie. anything. But no. do I need to see a good part five? Yeah, I would like to. But to me, it's like Andy. Andy fights Nazis, not aliens. Yeah. You know, like and and it, it's not about those type of things. But at the same time, Temple of Doom doesn't have Nazis. It has you know go crazy. Exactly. Yeah, you know, We're like, not like yeah. let's not yeah. overthink Indiana Jones. But what I'm just more interested to in see is how do we make. Harrison Ford, who's very likable. I mean, hell, he made $24 million with a fake CGI dog played by a human. But I, I want to see what happens. I love James Mangold, good brother. You know how I feel about him. He's one great movie away from becoming an Academy Award winning director. I think he was snubbed for Logan, as well as I think Patrick Stewart snubbed for that movie. But yeah. I'm super excited. And it's, it's sad because Steven Spielberg is maybe the GOAT. People talk about Scorsese, but it might be Spielberg that's the GOAT. So we'll see what he has. He has a West Side Story coming out. Is it this year or next year, Good Brother? Uh, this year. So we'll see what happens with that. Maybe that's the the swan song for Mr. Spielberg. But we'll, we'll definitely keep our eyes on that one as well. And even more news from Disney. This time, we jump to another IP. The Star Wars universe, Good Brother. I talked about it last week that we found out Sasha Banks was going to be in Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty fun. Then, after I recorded that, some other news came up. We find out that there is a new, quote-unquote, a new Star Wars movie in production. And they have writers, and they're trying to do this. The problem is, what happened to the Game of Thrones writers movie? What We found out what happened with the postponement of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think right now, when it comes to Star Wars movie content, I, I just want to see them get to a finish line. I want them to get yeah. into... Uh, pre and post production. I feel like art takes a while, and yes. I think maybe we're a little hard on Disney some of because they hit it out of the park so many times. Like this is what normal companies go through. And mm. I was, and again, I didn't know much about the new project. I know Star Wars fans are extremely excited, like the diehards. Well, there's this, which makes me excited. Well, here's the thing that more people are excited about, not necessarily the movie announcement. The other news that came from Star Wars is this new series of books and comics about the golden age of the Jedi called Star Wars: The High Republic. And a lot of people believe this might be that new canon yeah. that finally allows to bring in all the. I mean, we have a new owner. We don't know. Like, we don't we'll know. We have no idea. Maybe this is all part of it. Maybe now we are going to go a different direction. I think, I think you're yeah. fine. I, again, you just put a baby Yoda animatronic out that sold out in like an hour. So I, I don't think we're. I think if you feel Star Wars is in a bad place, you're being a little over dramatic. Can I uh, say something, too? I just so over the Christmas break a few uh, two months ago, I got from the Loving Nicole Mancha a Nintendo Switch. So I beat Mario Odyssey and, and Breath of the Wild. But before I was doing that, I was playing through Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order. And I found out there was a sequel. So I'm like, I really need to beat the, the sequel coming out. And it's in production. So I, I really needed to beat this game. So I didn't realize that where I left off literally two days before Christmas was the final mission. I literally just beat it today as if this recording, you could watch it on twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Good brother. I said this in the in the episode. When Star Wars is at its best is when it feels, looks, tastes, sounds, the grit. There's something about it. The shininess, the shine that was the new Star Wars movies, I think it was what I, a lot of people can't articulate is what's wrong with it. Because watch Mandalorian. Watch the Clone Wars cartoon. Watch Rebels. Play Jedi Fallen Order. There's a, a tone that it's very hard to find in Star Wars. And the only way, it's kind of like porn. 
The only way I know what it is is that I know what it is. Yeah, no. I know when I see it. You know how I feel. I feel like I'm incredibly lucky that I was born when I was born. Sure. I feel like I'm the diehard Star Wars fan that was born early enough to enjoy the, the originals without being cynical. Because you go back now and they don't age completely great. And then the prequels came out and obviously the story is not great. And they don't even age very well anymore. But... I love – there is not a Star Wars movie I don't love. I love the new trilogy. I think the only issue with the new trilogy, the new trilogy is yeah. – I love it. I, I think your biggest issue is lack of connection, but I love Force Awakens. I love Last Jedi. I think Last Jedi is still one of the best Star Wars we ever made. And The Last Jedi, I look back on it, I'm like, that was so entertaining. Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. You know what's my favorite modern-day Star Wars movie, though? Last Jedi. No. Oh. Rogue One. Yeah, I adore fine. Rogue One. And if you adore Rogue One, Jedi Fallen Orders, yeah. Final Mission. I didn't know about this all these months later. You want me to spoil it for you? I'm assuming it's the Rogue One. Essentially, you go through this whole mission. They never mention him. You beat the final boss. And then as you're beating her, she's an Inquisitor. You hear Vader's mask. Yeah. And he kills her in one strike. And you have to you, – you fight him. And they did the smartest thing. You can't touch him. You run after him. He grabs you. He starts choking you. The mission, you have to run away. Do you remember the Spider-Man game? Yeah. It's a, oh, it's, it's one that. of those? It yeah. is phenomenal. That's And this is what I said. Star Wars gets it right when they make Vader feel like that. I thought Solo was just as good as Rogue One. That's, that's fair. I loved it. Speaking of loving good brother, we move into another universe. We move to Candy Bugs Man, Bunny. Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. Candy which Man. is going to be great. Trailer comes I, out tomorrow. Super Andrew. excited. Big I hope surprise. it's a Chicago based they, still. All they're, they're saying there's a surprise that we're going to be very surprised at who's playing Candyman. What's my boy's name? Jordan Peele? No, no, no. Uh, he plays, uh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler to Watchmen. To Watchmen, spoiler. He plays Dr. Manhattan. Oh, he man, has I can't do the name. Dr. Uh, uh, Mantis. He's nah, I can't do the gifted name. as the a man in between way, the legs. The name he's is way too hard. superstar in the no, making. Like, I, don't, I, I won't do the name justice. Oh, he's the best, but he's the man. Um, he's in Candyman, so I can't wait no, to yeah, see that. No, yeah, though, the but, big surprise is who is Candyman. I hear yeah. it's a big shock, big surprise, so I can't wait. So, but... Well, we were surprised for, and in another universe for Warner Brothers, good brother, we saw the costume for Matt Reeves, Batman. Wasn't Robert Pattinson in the in the costume? But we, ben Affleck. It, yeah, it, 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 it really did look like Ben Affleck. Yeah. I have to be honest with you. I loved it. I, I it know great. it was a stunt con- costume, but you know, damn yeah, it, I, I loved it. I don't love talking about pictures like this because for me, it's just, they're, they're fine. Like, it, it's a behind-the-scenes photo, like... It's like looking at an egg in a little bowl before you scramble it. It is what it is. I think they look great. That's, that's all I got for you. What about the, I'm excited. I love the uh, the bat motorcycle. I actually thought that was the best part of the costume. Yeah, that's the more the, interesting the part because it's very year one. Yes. Before yes. he has all yes. the like the super, super stoked stuff where it's more just him putting bat logos on things. I want to. I know what probably the answer is, but I really just want to get it on, on podcast oh, form. Oh, we got Catwoman too. Yeah, uh, she's going to be great. How excited are you for this movie? I'm, it's one of those, and I hate, and I feel bland doing it. Where it's like I don't, there's nothing to talk about. It's right? so far yeah. away. We're like I don't want to get. I'm not gonna get excited but about like, it because you know I'm gonna get so excited when it's yeah. close. Yeah. I don't want to get excited about it. It was like Star Wars last year, Avengers. Yeah. We're like, talk to me the month before or when the trailer comes out. I'll show you how excited. And until then, I'm gonna be bland and boring, and I, you're not gonna want my opinion. But this is the thing. I've been saying this on on this podcast for at least at least a year. It's been too long without a Batman movie in this day and age of of, of cinema. And it's funny because it was only 2010, it's been 10 years only. Like we, you know what I mean? Like we, I know it's crazy. That's our like James how Bond. Much we need our, That's our James Bond. No, I, I get it, but it's so funny. Like from think about it, from 1989 till now, we've had like 15 Batman movies. So we let, let's, no, okay, not 15. So let, we've had the, we had the, the, the burden, four, the burden two, then the, the next three, two, the Nolan three. Uh, I'm going to count BBS. That's eight. So eight. And then, like, so that's eight solo Batman movies. And then add two more for his team-ups. Dude, that's, we've had in in 30 Not years. Not enough. That means Not every enough. three years we get a Batman. The British have 25 James Bond movies. Yeah, they're I not, need at least thirty-seven. But guess what? A lot of them aren't good. We won the war. We need I more like movies. Our, I like our tactics better. We did five, and at least two are good, which I saw Casino Royale. It's okay. Watch your mouth. It's a, it's, 
a perfect hour of a movie that drags. So for what it's worth, we love the Batman costume. Oh, for yeah. what Batman's, we Batman's God. Another thing that's God, or at least was God on the Netflix verse, was friend reruns. But now, good brother, you won't have to watch reruns, or at least you can add an episode or episodes to your reruns because it has been announced. It has dropped. This comes to us from our friends at Yahoo. After months of rumors, the news has been confirmed by HBO Max. A friend's reunion is in the works. The popular sitcom is coming back to TV with all six original friends for an exclusive HBO Max special. There aren't a lot of details available yet, but here's what we do know. HBO Max secured all six original casts of the show because we all know it wouldn't be a show without them. Yeah. Courtney Cox, David Schwimmer, Matt LeBlanc, Lisa Kudrow, Jennifer Aniston, and Matthew Perry have signed for the HBO Max special, which will debut in May of 2020. That's the app. Each of them making an alleged $2.5 to $3 million each to reprise their roles from the TV show, which ended just over 15 years ago. So what's the story? Are they going to actually do an episode, or what is that what we're guessing? Here's That's what's going to happen. What, yes. The reunion is going to set up an HBO movie. They did go with Entourage, didn't they? And they have done Sex in the City late. Like yeah, they, this, they will. Yeah. And, they, and it will make all the money in the world. And you know what? Here's the thing. They're all famous Because you're enough. not going to – because honestly, when people are like, you're not paying that much. Not, like, I can say I'm just doing a reunion. All for friends, all those people. Yeah, that's how much it costs them just to do a reunion. Yeah, I believe that. Do I think this is more to announce one more, like an hour, 32 hour movie? Personally, yes. So let me ask you this. We're, I don't think we're afraid. I know it's very basic, but I'm a big friend. We're fan. friends fans. Let me ask Fanatic you this. Almost. Yeah, let me ask you this. Would you rather see an hour long, unfiltered kind of podcast type of round table with the cast? Would you rather see a one hour special? Or would you rather see a feature-length HBO Max movie? A movie. I think it's smarter. It's better business. It takes less time for the actors. I don't really need a few episodes. I mean, if you can do a mini series like four episodes or something like that. But, yeah, two-hour movie, four episodes. That's basically it. Just tell me if you're going to do it, I just want to know what's going on now. I agree, and it's something that's going to drive people yeah. subscribing to that app. Exactly. And so I think it's, it's smart. It's I mean, smart. It's... The same reason you make an Obi-Wan movie. The same reason you make original movies yeah. for Netflix, this is why you bring friends into this. Like, this is going to be big for them. And speaking of big for them, good brother, we talk about a big payday for the WWE as they go to Saudi Arabia for Super Showdown on Thursday afternoon here in the United States. Good brother, we'll just go down the card because we are on our way to WrestleMania. I have some questions I want to uh, run you know, by you because with it being WrestleMania season, the card is going to start getting together i think we already know black and and aj so we'll see we'll Wait, start out black and, no alistair black and aj styles Undertaker. I'll, i think it's i think you don't have alistair black at this point in february get into it with aj why you're gonna have another pay-per-view in between anyway undertaker is gonna cost aj something with him maybe we'll it's no undertaker right, definitely fighting AJ. let's start with this seth rollins and murphy versus the street profits for the wwe raw take team championship street profits okay yeah i agree that's your big dad. That's my one. I said there'll be three big things. That's one. Bailey versus Naomi for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, screwy finish. I got Bailey. But yeah, Bailey yeah, wins for screwy wins, finish. Yeah. AJ Styles versus Andrade versus Bobby Lashley versus Eric Rowan versus R Truth versus Rey Mysterio for the Tuwak Chelfrey. Is it AJ or Andrade? Because Andrade's suspension ends today. Okay. And he's your U.S. champion, right? Yeah. Okay, because they were smart enough where, like, if it was more than 30 days, he would heck, like, by WWE law, has it dropped the title. So I was like, man, they don't do anything with their secondary titles anymore. Yeah, Andrade wins because uh, I think Aleister Black probably costs us AJ Styles something. Something there. fun, yeah. maybe, yeah. I'm going to save this one for the end. Uh, Rusev, obviously, in contract disputes. He got yeah, pulled from the four Rey Mysterio. Yeah. So I want to – we'll get into this. The next match is in this order. Alas, okay. Roman Reigns versus King Corbin. Steel cage match. Roman, Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns. R Roman must pose. Yeah. Brock versus Ricochet for the uh, championship. Now, here's the question. Is it a banger? I, I think he's going to let Ricochet Where's Drew McIntyre? Is he doing anything? No, he's not on this Then uh, He might just come mess up Brock. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, maybe. But uh -huh. uh, I think Ricochet will get some bumps in. He'll get a little shy. Hey, are we, is this going to be a Finn Balor thing, or is this going to be a squash? I don't know. 
Yeah. I, I mean, I, Brock I, likes bumping. Brock likes going with the little I, guys. My, I think it's going to be a squash. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be. It could totally be. I don't know if it's more of a squash than a banger. The New Day, Kofi Kingston and Big E versus John Morrison and The Miz for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. They're dropping those titles in Mania. Yeah, I think the New Day wins this one. I, I think eventually that's where we're going but with Morrison, Morrison and, and Miz. Morrison and Miz need to win. No, no, Two. they do. It's yeah. Saudi Arabia. No one cares. Yeah. I think they're winning them at Mania. I think they're going to beat the New Day at Mania for the titles. So this is the one that, thanks to Meltzer and Alvarez and all the dirt sheets, everybody's confused about. I thought it was pretty plain and simple, but the Fiend Bray Wyatt Versus Goldberg the for the Universal Championship. Fiend. A lot of people think it's Goldberg. That's fine. People are dumb. I think it's the Fiend. It's the Fiend. You're, you're not putting the title on Goldberg. You're just not doing it. You don't think you would put Goldberg versus uh, Roman Reigns? Nope. I think Roman you have a lot of faith in WWE to not do that. I, I'm the man. I, I got the golden picks. That's not happening. Okay. I called the Fiend winning the title when everyone thought I was dumb. No. Well, because everybody knew he was going to win the title. They just didn't think they were going to give him... Seth's title. At Saudi. Yeah, at Saudi. Saying, I, I they did call, I did Brock call on it. Friday. I'm usually pretty good about these. Like, this is my thing. No, I, I don't think so. Again, something screwy is going to happen. I don't know. I mean, I could totally see I, I could totally see Goldberg. Taker, I got a break. Taker comes out. Goldberg, Taker, uh, too, at is, Mania. That's what I'm saying. You're just This is the same company that did that. This is the same company. I'm more worried about that than I am actually Goldberg winning the title, Mike. So that is what you can see on Super Showdown. But here in the greatest city in the world, Chicago, AEW Revolution. I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna say this. Uh AEW and NXT right now. The ad- NXT needs to travel. I- I'm sick of full sale. NXT as a show is a better. I like it through and through. I like the people better. They got the best women's division. The tag's getting better. I love Keith Lee. Here's the problem, though. AEW right now has the two best storylines going in any wrestling entertainment right now. Anything yeah, with Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes yeah. and anything with Chris Jericho. Yeah. Those, like, if you put a list of, like, what's the best thing going on in wrestling? It's Cody Rhodes, Chris Jericho. Then you start going into, okay, Brock Lesnar and Drew is pretty good. The Fiend. But, like, the two, and then you're like, Gargano's fine and Ciampa and all that. But I'm telling you, like, and they've won me over. Do I think AEW has a lot of work to do? Yeah. I'll give them credit. It's getting better. I yeah, I love I the tag stuff. MJF is good. With, I, uh, tag stuff's okay. I love Hangman. Yeah, I like, like Hangman. That storyline is fun. Yeah. Again, or is there still a lot they have to do? But for I'll give them credit. They listen. They're doing better. I find myself watching more AEW than NXT. I agree. Because NXT feels so stale. And I, I, they got a relaunch. And, like, I know they are. Like, they're kind of having a. Well, because it's the same guys. They, they got to start making some new guys. And I think it would do them justice bringing more WWE, Raw, and SmackDown talent. Like, rearranging a bit. Mm. I, a good draft will do everyone some good. I think a good draft always does something good. You just can't yeah, have a draft yeah, every yeah. four months. But so. I think we need a new champion. Um, I love everything Cody does. Cody's my favorite wrestler right now. Like, I am so excited for this. Moxley's going to win the title. So let's get into it. We have Nyla Rose versus Chris Statlander for the AEW Women's Championship. Nyla Rose, great interview on Jericho. Yeah, Really good to get to know Nyla Rose and her whole whole transformation. Should they they talk about the transgenderness? Should they incorporate Uh, that? Like, good or bad? Should they do it? No. Heel or baby face? Again, listen to Nyla Rose on Jericho, and and she goes into it and, you know, what that's all about. And Nyla Rose is awesome. I think way better than their other champion. Yeah, I like Chris Statlander, too. Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara. I like both I these guys. I love Darby yeah, Allen love and Darby Sammy Guevara. Yeah. Again, one's connected to Chris Jericho, one's connected to Moxie. Like, these guys are killing it right Darby now. Allen. Yeah, Darby, Darby Allen. Darby Allen needs yeah. to win. Jake Hager versus Dustin Rhodes. We've seen it a bunch, but hey, it's fine. Jake Hager. Jake Hager. This is your guy, Kenny Omega and Adam Page versus the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. I think this is where we get finally Adam Page separating from the group. Kenny Omega turns on Adam Page yes. and the Young Bucks when they're Yeah, titles. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what order we're going to put it in, but because the title goes on. Well, no, since you just blurted it out, Chris Jericho versus Moxley. Why do you think Moxley wins the AEW World Championship? It's his time. It's, it's all set up for it. Bozzy's going on tour, by the way, in April. That makes sense, that too. Makes sense. It's just, it is right. Like They, they told a great story. Yeah. and. Jericho got the title over. They built your champion. Yeah. I can easily say Chris Jericho, as a wrestling fan, is the best champion we have right now. And then I uh, Adam Cole next. So, the hottest feud gets his first match in its series here in Chicago, the best city in the world, MJF versus Cody in what has been one of the best true wrestling yeah. feuds we've seen in the last half year. 
MJF has to win this. No, Cody does. If Cody wins this, MJF can't go anywhere from here. No, he's a heel. I think we're finally seeing the ultimate baby, the ultimate heel, where it doesn't, the win or loss really doesn't matter. You give it to the baby face to make that crowd feel good in Chicago because you're going to do enough other stuff. I think MJF is just, he's such a good heel. It doesn't, like, he doesn't have to beat Cody right now. Because he can easily, I can see him going against John Moxley and winning somehow. The reason why he beats Cody is because he's going to beat Moxley for that title. At I, I, I don't think he needs to beat him, though, to do that. I think it's better to let Cody win. So then where does Cody go after beating but, uh, MJF? Here's the problem. If Cody loses, you've lost twice. Like, you, he, you're still on the MJF thing because you never got your revenge. Now he's chasing him. And now the, the, guy, chasing, who, yeah. the guy who kept him from winning the championship ever. Wins the championship, no, and now so that's who he gets reversed. the title from. You, you let him beat him. It's done story for now. Eventually, in a year from now, when MJF is champion, you come back. It's like, I beat you. Fight. And then MJF gets the win. What is the easiest booking 101 that we saw in the territory in WCW? MJF I, beats Cody in a dirty way the first time. He finally gets his hands on him, and MJF still beats him. MJF then goes to Vegas, beats John Moxley. And now has said, I've beaten Cody. I've beaten Moxley. I, you could kiss so the So why ring. does Cody have another chance? Because Cody says, "You, I will retire if no. I will retire I from AEW I, I, retirement, nope. the AEW championship. I think I just you're told underestimating you Cody Rhodes is the greatest baby face in wrestling right now. He's a Rhodes. That's fine. I, I'll put money on it. Cody's winning. Okay, I got MJF. Yeah, and I, I, I think the exact same story goes on. Cody needs Cody winning makes more sense than MJF winning right now because no. then Cody flounders too much. No, Cody now struggles to get back to that point and now mm. has to go after the slimy heel that took everything. From I think him. we're saying the same thing with just one difference. I'm right, but that'll do it for us on this episode of the Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. Any final thoughts, good brother? Final thoughts. For everybody here, we appreciate you guys always supporting us. Make sure you guys leave us a comment, share, like, re review of the show, wherever you get your favorite podcast, at Mercado Airwaves. You can brothers on Twitter, at Mercado21. Alex and on Instagram, at Mercado2121. You can follow the loving Nicole Mancha on all the social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. I'm on Twitter, at Mike M Media, and on Instagram, at Mercado Media. You can follow this show on Twitter, at Good Brothers Pod, and of course, our true crime shows on Instagram, at Murder Mysteries and More. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Mercado Airwaves Network. And, of course, support us on a different level at Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. It really helps us, and it really shows the, the love that you guys can have for this network. And we appreciate each and every one of you who has done that. That'll do it for us. We'll have all the news next week, all the reviews, and everything that's happened in the pop culture world. But until then, for the good brother himself, Alex Mercado. Yeah. I'm the good brother, Mike Mercado. We'll see you on the next episode of the Good Brothers here on the Mercado airwaves network network thanks for joining us here on the good brothers here on mercado airwaves Hey guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves, our pop culture show The Good Brothers on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod, our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and more, and of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on youtube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network, and of course, you can support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win contests prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado we wish you a happy healthy holiday season and an awesome new year
Hey guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21 Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More. And of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And of course, you can support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win contests prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado we wish you a happy healthy holiday season and an awesome new year